the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. The 49ers know he's worth. Especially when, you know, their other the top receiver isn't a separator and isn't somebody who can, you know, create his own space and whatnot. So I think that he's invaluable to what they do offensively, even if it doesn't show up necessarily in the stat sheet. Um, I don't think he's going to end up going anywhere. I'd be very surprised if he did. Um, but something, I mean, we've seen crazier things happen. Yeah. I like it. Um, Jarrett, your team signed Russell Wilson. We talked about that last week. And then they were like, we're not done. We're going to trade Kenny Pickett to the Pittsburgh or to the Philadelphia Eagles. And then we are going to acquire Justin Fields to back up Russell Wilson, maybe for a year, but also maybe lock up Russell Wilson to a long term extension. Walk me through what the Steelers have decided to do and the path that they have elected to to uh, to ride down here with uh, Wilson and Fields. Jared Bailey, this has been the best week to be a Steelers fan for me and years. I haven't been this excited and this amped in a very long time. Um, so, I mean, what everybody for the most part knows what happens, but in case you have lived under a rock for the past week, the Steelers um, signed Russell Wilson, um, mm -hmm. to which Kenny Pickett did not enjoy that and uh, canceled workouts with his receivers um, and wanted out of Pittsburgh because Mike Tomlin made it clear that Russell Wilson would be going into OTAs and camp as a starter. So they traded him to Philadelphia. This is coming off the back in week 17 when he refused to dress as Mason Rudolph's backup. So, I mean, this is a snowball effect that has been going on for a few months now. Um, and then once they traded Pickett, that's when the Justin Fields stuff kind of kicked back up because they had been interested in Fields before. Um, and then Nick Farbaugh Steelers now reported, hey, they're – still interested in Justin Fields. Um, Justin Fields preferred to go to Pittsburgh and Ryan Poles, you know, credit to him, did right by Justin Fields and sent him to Pittsburgh. Um, and now, you know, you got a quarterback room that goes from Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph. All of them are gone. And you go to Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, man. I credit to Omar Khan because, I mean, you guys – you're my friends. You follow me. You know how my thought process has been for the last while. I have been very down in the dumps, and I have been constantly bitching and moaning about what this team, you know, the the quote unquote Steeler way. Omar Khan made it very clear that's dead, and that he is very much carving out a new path for the Steelers. Um, I'm excited, man. Um, I don't, I don't expect Russell Wilson and or Justin Fields to automatically become like top twelve to fifteen quarterbacks in football, but. If whomever goes out there and can be like last year, Russ is probably between like, I don't know, the 17th and 20th best quarterback in football. If you want to put him somewhere in there. Hey, that's a hell of a lot better than the quarterback play they had last year. So is it's it, what is it too early to ask the question? Like to you on a scale of one to 10, what is Wilson and what is fields? Like how far are they from each other? Because it doesn't seem, I don't think the gap is that far. I don't think the gap's that far either. I know some people are freaking out about like, oh man, they're naming Russ the, the starter and not even giving Justin Fields a chance to compete. Guys, this is the same team that said, we believe in Kenny Pickett. We're not going to pursue any sort of big splash at quarterback. Like it's okay to establish QB one and QB two going into the off season. Like that's normal for teams to do. And if anything, it just establishes a, a starting point. Russ is the starter. Doesn't mean that things can't change. Things have already drastically changed for the Steelers. So, well, no, but less about what they what the Steelers will do. I want your opinion. Like, like how bad or like what what needs to happen before you start? Let's assume like Fields has like what the prototypical Fields looks great in camp. Fields mm. has looks like he's got really good rapport. Taking you know taking advantage of the reps he's getting. Blah blah blah. Mm. blah. What do you do if like Russell Wilson comes out and is like at best? the best version of the worst version we've seen of Russell Wilson so far. Like I how soon do you pull the plug? I think Russell Wilson would have to look tumultuous and camp and OTAs and everything for him to not start week one. I think he's going to start week one, but if Pittsburgh starts, you know, let's say by week six, they're two and three or two and four. And it's obvious that Russ just isn't, it's just not working. Then, you know, you can say, all right, that's why we traded for Justin Fields. You know, we'll put him in and uh, see how we can take advantage of Arthur Smith's offense. Um, and again, I'm cool with them going into the season with Russ as a starter. 
But if I had to guess right now, Justin Fields is going to start some games at some point. I also wouldn't be surprised if they, if Arthur Smith contrives some sort of like Justin Fields package for him to get a select number of snaps per game, just because like if you've got an athlete like that, take advantage of him. Um, but I'm I'm cool with Russ going into everything as a starter. Um, I think that last year he took a massive step from 2022 to 2023. Obviously, 2022 was just so low that it was hard to get worse. Um, but I'm cool with going into camp with Russ as a starter, seeing what Justin Fields does. And there's not really a lost scenario for the Steelers here. Like best case scenario, hey, Russ plays well. You win some games. Um, you're in the playoff hunt. Maybe you win 10 games again and sneak into the playoffs. Maybe like the defense looks even better than it did last year, which I think it should. And you can, you know, end this playoff win drought and steal a win in, in, in a playoff game. Worst case scenario is, oh man, Russ really doesn't look good. You turn it over to Justin Fields um, and he does play well. Or I guess the worst case scenario is that they both stink. But even then, you invested almost nothing into them and then you can figure out the quarterback situation next year. So everything right now, man, it's uh, it's so much less grim <laughs> than what it was 10 days ago. And uh, yeah, I'm on cloud nine, man, which, is, which says a lot going from horrible quarterback play to like, mediocre quarterback play for me to be this ecstatic but that's where i'm at and uh i'm excited i'm excited to see what they do you're on cloud nine knowing that you'll probably be a nine win team shows how bad things have been i think that they'll win more than nine games i'll say that right now i mean if they did i don't i wouldn't be surprised but like i think it's gonna be a weird year for the steelers like occam occam's razor tells you so they're playing a third place schedule they play a third place schedule last year they've got better quarterback play they've got a better offensive coordinator they've got uh, on paper, a better defense. Just who's if, who, okay? If, tell me this then: Who's got the better quarterback room? Jimmy G, Trey Lance, in previous year when Trey Lance was the starter, or Russell Wilson and Justin Fields? I think yeah. overall the Steelers in that situation are the better quarterback. You think room. so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Trey Lance just, ended up being the the highest compensation traded for those quarterbacks. Either way well, it goes, I, mean, I think. With this trade, like Jared said, the Steelers have basically invested nothing into this. They paid Russ $3 million. It's right not like they paid. are tied to Russell Wilson to right, start right. this entire year. But haven't they, they invested time? Point. When we say they've invested no money, but they have invested time. Because now this is your your quarterback room going to next year. So no, you have I, invested no, but time. No, here. I wouldn't say that. Let's, let's put it this way. They had Kenny Pickett. Yeah. They were in a bad situation. For them to punt this year and go, hey, Best case scenario, Russell Wilson returns some of that magic. Worst case scenario, we've got a backup to see if Justin Fields could even be something. They were punting this year regardless. There was no like no, there was no Steelers I team the, I that was going to win the punting. division. This is so really going into punting going into, in into, terms of they're not winning the division. Well, yeah, I mean, I. They weren't winning the division with Kenny Pickett. They're not winning the division Absolutely. with Russell Wilson. They're not winning well, the division with Justin Fields. So, but thing, I'm saying if you're getting that type of production and wins, why not? I mean, it's it's listen, it's the it's the box. You might have, you, but you didn't have a boat. You want to see what's in the box. Yeah, and with the Steelers too, like it wasn't just like hey Omar Khan going out and signing Russell Wilson. No, it was Cam Hayward, T.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Pat Fryer moved like leaders of this team going to Russell Wilson, going to Omar Khan saying, look we want Russell Wilson. We need a change of quarterback. And that's why they did it. Um, Cam Hayward and Russ FaceTime for an hour ahead of him signing. They all had dinner together um, immediately after he signed. Like the, the team knew that Kenny Pickett wasn't the guy, which ultimately I think was another big reason why he wanted to get out of there because he lost the locker room. Um, and I think the Steelers also recognize like, dude, if we have competent quarterback, like if we just have the most mediocre quarterback play for the past two years, we're, winning 10, 11 games, we might have a playoff win. And I think that's what they recognize right now. And that's why they wanted to go get a guy like Russ, who, you know, is right now the definition of, okay, he's mediocre quarterback, but as a seasoned vet, and then you get a Justin Fields with that, they're, they're in such a better place. Not to mention the fact you signed Patrick Queen, which, by the way, Patrick Queen, the largest external free agent signing in the history of the Steelers in terms of money. Um, they they signed Deshaun Elliott as and well. And he's a Raven. Oh, dude, that that's the best part of it. You handicap yeah. the Ravens in the process. That's a double whammy. 
Um, they signed Deshaun Elliott as well from the Dolphins. Um, and those two signings also say that they want Minka Fitzpatrick to have less on his plate so he can just p- patrol center field like he used to. You know, if you need to load the box with the safety and run support, Deshaun Elliott. You got Patrick Queen now patrolling the middle of the field. Minka intercept passes on the back end. So there, there's definitely a proof of concept of what they're doing defensively as well. Um, they acquired cornerback Dante Jackson uh, and the Deontay Johnson trade. Um, I think they're going to add another cornerback to that room because outside of Joey Porter and Dante Jackson, there's not really a lot of, you know, proven talent, even that Dante Jackson is still, you know, not, not, not one of the top corners in the league to put it nicely, but better than what, than Levi Wallace and what Patrick Peterson showed last year. So they're showing that they want to get better and they're showing that they're serious about winning and wanting to, you know, win a playoff game and you know maybe more than that. But, um, I'm much more excited for what the season has in store for Pittsburgh today than I was, you know, 10 days ago, two weeks ago. It's night and day. Good. JB. So I'm curious on this front, and this is something that, I mean, reading different pieces and listening to different smart folks talk about it. Like I, I can't answer this question. And I'm curious if you can, where is the disconnect with Justin Fields with how the league clearly sees Justin Fields? as a quarterback in 2024 versus how sport like Twitter and sport like nicely just- done nephew the chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.